Hi guys and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. Uh, today I am going to be showing you my settings and what I did in order to fix the stuttering and the lagging from my flights on Flight Sim 2024. So on settings you can see that I've got these options toggled, uh, photo, grammetry, I've left tipped because I do want to see the buildings. I just don't want to see flat um, style buildings. I do want it to actually look a little bit realistic, so I left that on. Live weather, that's a big deal. Multiplayer, I've never ever used, I've never ever played, so I've just ticked that off. Aircraft traffic type, now this is the main one. I've got it as AI offline. Um, you can keep it as offline, I think uh, that would probably be better. But this basically just uh, reduces um, a lot of traffic and yeah, it just makes it uh, much more easier to use. We've seen in my previous videos where I've had um, aircraft just flying across the runway, that has essentially stopped it. Um, I don't get aircraft also um, spawning on top of mine when I'm at the gate as well. Rolling cache settings, I've set to 96 gigabytes, and now in order to do this, I had to basically uh, delete some files and move some files from my hard drive to my external SSD drive, the one that you can plug in on the back of the Xbox. So that I would recommend doing. I think you can set a lower to like 76 gigabytes, but I don't really think it matters. Um, everything else, as you can see here, I've left the same. And I've realized that it does make um, a bit of a difference. Um, all these global settings I've left unticked because I want my flights to be as clean as they look without uh, different uh, models and HUDs appearing on the screen. So right now what we're going to do is just go to a random flight, choose an A350 because that was the aircraft that I was having the most issues with. Um, I don't know if you saw on the marketplace yesterday as well but they did advertise cabin packs for Xbox. Now that is not the case, um, Inabils themselves also um, advertised it on their Twitter but again uh, that doesn't seem to be the case so don't expect those cabin packs to be available. So we've got the A350 uh, 900 variant and we're just going to load into Heathrow and I'm just going to do a quick uh, setup and then we are going to just take off and I'll show you how the flight itself uh, feels and how the plane feels when I'm turning and compared to before compared to when I first flew the aircraft on this game you saw how bad it was you saw the stuttering like the, the plane was unflyable so it has made a, a bit of a difference and I reckon if you do these settings it might help a bit so it's worth a try as soon as we load in um, you can see there's a few bugs uh, I've had that before but all you need to do is just load out the aircraft and then load back in. Obviously it's not ideal and I, ho I do hope that Inabils releases an update sometime soon to fix these nagging issues that they have. But I've loaded onto the actual runway because whenever I try loading into the gate and do the startup procedure it's just uh, long and uh, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, I'm doing a full 360 view around the aircraft. You can see slight stuttering and lagging but it's not as bad as it was before um, which is the good thing and that is essentially what I want and that's what I need in order to fly this plane now don't get me wrong the stuttering the lagging it won't go it won't disappear forever but from the last few flights that I've done they have actually worked perfectly fine and I've not really experienced as much stuttering uh, as before compared to my first videos if you want to go back and have a look at them in my first video that I did about the A350 about the problems it has you, that was a main focal point but for me obviously it's essentially for me it's getting a lot better right now so what I'm going to be doing now is just doing the startup procedure just to show you that it doesn't really lag as much as well the more I do this the more I get used to it um, again the only issue I seem to have is autopilot and getting the actual flight plan on the ND thingy so the black screen uh, next to the speedometer. I, I, I've tried so many things once it worked but again when I put on autopilot it didn't seem to follow the plan so I really hope someone can help me with this. I've tried looking at different videos on YouTube um, but none of them seem to actually explain the issue or explain how to do it properly so I'll probably give it a little bit more help just to see how it is. So I've inputted the flight plan into the FMS system uh, that uh, I've shown you in my last video so I won't show you all of this again uh, once 
uh, I've done all this I'll just uh, skip to the actual takeoff and I'll show you how smooth it is for me and whether there's any stuttering or lagging which is basically the main focus of this video so uh, here we go this is takeoff and we so you can see my flight plan is there on that black screen but uh, once I activate autopilot for some reason it just doesn't want to follow that flight plan so I think I'm doing something wrong uh, if I am let me know in the comments below some of you have helped me out a lot in my previous videos uh, which I really appreciate so uh, the more you can help me out here the more I can fix them and then I can show you everyone else um, if there's any specific issues that how to do them so uh, take off pretty smooth in my opinion I didn't have any stuttering or lagging um, inside the cockpit uh, once I go outside the cockpit there's a slight uh, stuttering and lags but they seem to uh, well there was one right there but like I said it's not as bad as it was before so that's the main thing in my opinion uh, let's just uh, do a lot of these uh, takeoff procedures here so uh, master warning get rid of that noise and then just uh, do the lever climb uh, again, it, this is a really fun aircraft to use. Um, it is really um, interesting, and you do feel like a pilot once you get to uh, get to grips with all the procedures and everything. So yeah, I do recommend buying this. Again, the main issue is just how bad the game is in itself. So eventually, once it does get released on Flight Sim 2020, um, it should be so much better. Um, like I've said before, having the lack of cabin and camera modes it is very frustrating. Um, it takes away part of the flying experience so it's not something we can do we can't complain or anything because any builds themselves I said they're not gonna get it out which is frustrating but I mean with all the issues we've had so far it probably makes sense as you can see here I've enabled AP1 um, but it just doesn't want to follow my flight plan which is uh, frustrating so it is what it is um, I don't think I've seen any stutterings yet or lags um, but you guys be the judge of that uh, I'll just fly the aircraft for a little bit just to show you how it looks but yeah I think if you do these settings it might help a little bit um, and to be fair even a little bit is better than what I had before um, you can try these settings let me know in the comments below or what you think if it actually works for you I know some people have said that they do have the same stuttering experiences so this video is just literally to try and help you guys out um, and if it works it works if it doesn't then well flight simulator Microsoft to Sobo they've got serious issues to sort out um, but this game's been out for what more than six seven months and they've not fixed anything yet so who knows what that they're gonna do as always uh, thanks for watching this video leave a like press that subscribe button and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for a brand new flight